In the spirit of sharing stories, I, I was able to go this summer to Amsterdam for the first time where I'd, I'd never traveled. And when we first arrived that afternoon, uh, the first thing we did was go to Anne Frank's house, uh, which is in Amsterdam. Uh, and I had never been. And actually, I didn't know until we got to Amsterdam that that was where she lived. And so it was a bit of a surprise. And for those of you that don't know the, the heartbreaking story of Anne Frank, you know the major story. But the part that people don't often know is that Anne was sent with her sister Margot uh, to a concentration camp. And they lived uh, there together. Uh, and Margot, her sister, died first. She starved to death. Um, and uh, the friends who still knew Anne said that it was actually that loss that broke uh, Anne Frank, and Anne Frank actually died just two weeks before the camp was liberated by the British. Um, and what is incredible is when you go up to the attic of Anne Frank's room, and you walk into that room, it is filled with cutouts of movie stars and strawberries and roses and the things that any 10-year-old girl would put up uh, in her room in the middle of this tiny attic hidden away. And I went back to my room after that, and I just, uh, and I, I, have, I have two boys who were twins who were four. I have now a baby daughter that was born since then. And I thought about uh, how it is that I would tell my boys about Anne Frank. Um, and so uh, I wrote them this letter uh, that I wanted to read for you today. Um, uh, it's called The Postcard from Amsterdam. Uh, Dear Emmett and Seamus, uh, I met a girl today who lived in an attic. A game of hide and seek, but not with friends. Behind a wall of books, she wrote her own. A book she never got to sell or touch. A first edition without a signature. Orphaned into 24 languages all at once. Unlike your books that are so timeless, this one ages, marking days of an unlived life with relived pages. Her room is full of pictures, movie stars and flowers, little girls and wild strawberries, like those she'll never pick and never taste, like children she'll never conceive nor carry. My attic down the street is full of light, not just from unblacked windows and space to write, but glowing from the lives we get to live, the late night books and morning hugs you give. The long hallway sprint launched into my arms, a reckless smile and a, Daddy, look what I got. A little yellow star stickered to his hand. It's not some playground prize that lights his face, but my boy stumbling on a world of grace. The mystery that others love us too. Not because we're family or some debt we're due, but why sometimes for no reason they can't stop from telling him that he is a little golden star. That, my sons, is the light inside my attic. And there, too, is the crime I can't forgive. The picture of two daughters and their father, walking shamed with giant, yellow, hateful stars, pinned to tell a child all that she is not. That lesson long since pierced her broken heart, in her gate, you see a girl already gone, propped like a scarecrow whose parts can't find a fit. No matter what history will try to say, his face told me that Otto Frank died that day. She could not leave, and I knew I couldn't stay. Two roads on crossing here on Westercraft Way. Normally, we'd have Anna to our house to play. So I vowed to introduce her to Emmett and Shay. That was not a promise I meant to make, and one I've tried three times so far to break. Because her room is filled with things I never wanted you to touch. Worse than scissors in the drawer or Clorox in the cupboards, these things aren't safe even if you just walk real slow. Even if daddy helps you pour, they can't be safe. They're not even safe for mommies or for daddies. What kind of father would I be to lay them out before you? Knowing once they've opened, they're never put away. Knowing they'll be with you on the playground, in your bed between your blankie and your tiger, between the other puzzle pieces on the floor, and with you all the times that I am not 
these most dangerous of things. What kind of father would I be giving my boy a barbed wire ball and sending him out to play? I'd be running with band-aids and hugs, playgrounds and ice cream, forever binding my boys back up again. Ice cream. Oh, Otto. Ice cream. Just one of Emmett's ice cream cones. Just the blueberry ball leaning off the cone, just about to fall. Just that would have been enough to tide Anna over to the liberation. I wish my boys could give her every cone they've had. Maybe it's a foreign concept for a child, that kind of human trade, the kind that Schindler made. Maybe too precocious for a child of three, that may be, if only it were an idea. But I know my little boys, the way that they hoard and then suddenly share their toys. I would build and defend a thousand annexes for them, the way they would for each other, to ensure they never had to stand and watch the starving of a sister or a brother. And I know that they would do the same for Anna if they could ever have the chance to meet her. And that is why, my boys, I'm writing you this postcard from Amsterdam. Emmett and Seamus, meet Anna. Thank you so much for all that you've given uh, and for making sure that my children will be raised in a world where we never forget.